Hi everybody, this is Leanne from Atlas. I'm here to talk with you today about heat illnesses, how to properly identify them, and how to respond when you know which one you're dealing with. Heat illnesses are a group of medical conditions resulting from the body's inability to cope with a particular heat load. Prolonged or intense exposure to hot conditions and heavy physical work, even in cooler conditions, can lead to your body overheating. Heat illness is preventable, but can lead to death if not treated quickly. So what are the different types of heat illnesses? Well, there's heat rash, sunburn, heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and finally, heat stroke. Heat rash is a cluster of small red blisters like pimples on the skin that don't necessarily happen in places that were exposed to sun. They can also happen in areas like the armpit or the groin that tend to be a little more moist. Um, and in order to treat these, you're going to want to keep them cool and dry. And you can use baby powder or other powders to soothe. The next heat illness that we're going to talk about is a sunburn. I'm sure we've all had one at some point or another. But this is uh, identified by painful red and warm skin that may have blisters. And to treat these, you want to stay out of the sun. You use cool cloths to soothe the skin. You can use a moisturizing lotion or gel like aloe. And you do not want to break the blisters as that can uh, expose them to bacteria that can cause infections. The next heat illness are cramps. Um, this is typically caused by heavy sweating during exercise um, or being in a very humid area where your sweat is not cooling your body appropriately, and so your body's response is to sweat more profusely. Um, and it's characterized by muscle pain or spasms. Um, to treat these, you're going to want to uh, seize activity and rest until the cramps subside, drink plenty of water, and replenish your electrolytes. If that's not helping, you want to seek medical help if your cramps last longer than an hour, or you're on a low-sodium diet or if you have a heart condition. The next two heat illnesses, heat exhaustion and heat stroke, can be very similar in presentation. And there are a couple of key things to help you identify which one they are. So heat exhaustion, you're going to have heavy sweating, cold, clammy skin, a fast but weak pulse, and you may also have nausea or vomiting. For treatment, you're going to move the person to a cool place loosen clothing um, and keep them cool with wet cloths or a bath and allow them to sip water slowly. You'll want to seek medical help if the vomiting happens, their symptoms last longer than an hour, or they get worse. Our final heat illness that we're going to discuss today is heat stroke. Now heat stroke is very serious. And if this is what's happening, you'll want to call 911 right away. The way to identify heat stroke is to take a body temperature. And you should do this if anybody's having any heat illness. But if the body temperature is over 103 degrees Fahrenheit, um, the person has hot, red, dry skin, which means that they're no longer sweating because they've run out of excess fluids. Their pulse is fast and strong. And they might also lose consciousness. For this treatment, you're going to move them to a cool place, loosen their clothes. You're going to want to get their body temperature down as quickly as possible. So as long as they're conscious, get them into a cold water bath immediately. And you're not going to allow them to ingest any food or drinks. And like I mentioned, you want to call 911 as soon as possible. I hope these help keep you safe while you're enjoying our warm Pacific Northwest summers. And if you have any questions, please let us know.